I do a lot of uh, story brokering mm -hmm. for ma mainstream media. Mm -hmm. So, well, probably, I hate to toot my own horn here, but in the last 10 years when TMZ um, was basically in its infancy, I was selling them a lot of stories. Right. And it became the new mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, we share that uh, as part of our history. Um, you know, working in the business... I always thought it was going to be recession proof. I always thought there was going to be money to be made for years and years and years. And then. Didn't we all? Look, you know, at the bottom kind of dropped out a little bit and it forced a lot of people to reinvent themselves. And everybody wanted to blame the tube sites and blame all the, uh, you know, the proliferation of free content. And yeah, there was all of that. But there was also a lot of criminals in the business mm -hmm. that were still kind of thinking, well, this is going to last forever. With me, I kind of wanted to look for the next thing and kind of make my. My exit. Right. And I started seeing where celebrity gossip and news became the new. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted to know what Lindsay Lohan was wearing or doing or what she was drinking or what she was snorting. And then it became what Paris Hilton was doing. And, you know, obviously my background kind of, you know, intersected with right. Paris's. Right. Uh, having promoted and put out One Night in Paris, her tape so Which, that kind of made me of course me, she had nothing to do well, with of course well it's funny because people ask me this all the time and i mm -hmm. can say this on the record yeah um because i won't get sued by her right look at first she was an innocent unwilling victim mm -hmm. um you know the person who initially came to us was uh rick solomon's roommate don thrasher mm -hmm. who had stolen the tape okay. from rick and some people speculated that he kind of had a thing for rick mm -hmm. so i think he was kind of it to his room. Oh, okay. I was going to say like a yeah. thing, like he had an no, out for Vic or he had like a I think he like was kind of in love with him. For, oh, how weird. You know what I mean? Kind of like a bisexual kind of weird thing. Yeah. But anyway, um, he watched that tape more, I think, to see Rick naked than to see Paris naked. <laughs> but he came to us and, and we paid him $50,000 up front. You know, he said that he owned the rights to it, which kind of knew he didn't. Yeah. But it was a publicity stunt. Right. You know, very much like Pam and Tommy Lee. When Seth Warshawski from Club Love put that out, he, he intimated that he had a tape and he was going to put it out at such and such date and such and such time fully thinking he was going to get a cease and desist from pam and tommy which he never did mm -hmm. which kind of tipped his hat and he said you know what i'm going to do it yeah which he did he really never got sued i mean he got sued but he never settled for millions and millions of dollars they didn't to this day have never made a dime on that tape which really? most people don't know uh in the case of paris of course when we put it out and again i get credited with being a part of probably the world's first viral video, which was the clip of the Paris Hilton sex tape in the dark with the infrared, you know, green yeah. tinged x ray vision. Mm -hmm. And I sent that to two people. I sent that to my contact at E and my contact at Us Weekly. Mm -hmm. And from there, it became the video clip seen around the world because everybody wants to impress their boss. Right. Everybody wants to say, hey, check out what I have. Let me show you something, mm -hmm. right? You have naked pictures of Aria Giovanni over here, right? So I you're like, hey, do. let me show you a picture I of Aria do. Giovanni naked on a couch. Uh, everybody wants to be the first person to see that. So they sent it to their producers, the producers sent it to somebody, and then they sent it to somebody, and before you know it, it, it became this huge, huge thing in 2003. It was probably the biggest news story of 2003, looking back at it. Yeah, absolutely. And it got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of heat. So now I have a question because there's a couple of things that, that I understood to be true. Maybe I'm wrong. Yes. Don't you have to have the models sign off on a model release and provide IDs and everything to be able to distribute that um, for profit, like distribute it through like a legit distributor? So mm -hmm. those tapes like the Paris Hilton mm -hmm. tape, um, the Kim Kardashian sure. tape, uh, the... Um, uh, Vern Troyer, Vern, Vern Troyer, no. Uh, China... Yeah, um, they Tom all Sizemore. had to sign model releases. Of course, so I mean, they you were know better than anybody. That's what I thought. You sign releases with every one of your models. I signed a release to be on your broadcast today. Yes. So why wouldn't that hold true with any other thing that you would buy in a jewel case? So these things, so they were all complicit in this as much as they would go and do these press junkets and say, oh my God, I can't believe my sex tape's out there. I'm so ashamed someone stole it from me. I feel mm -hmm. so violated, blah, 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 blah. Well, like I was saying, at first Paris was... She had no idea. She was in Australia when the whole thing happened. She had no idea that people were actually looking at this tape of hers, which obviously had to be devastating for her. So how did it get out then? Because well, obviously you didn't have paperwork on her. We did not have paperwork on it. And uh, it wasn't supposed to, it never went up on the website, which was .com at that point. Right. So what happened was we got all this notoriety and all this publicity. People came looking to .com to see the clip, which we did not host at that time. Mm-hmm. 
And that was primarily what we wanted, which is a lot of traffic to the website. Um, because I sent out those two clips, somebody sent it out to somebody who put it up online, and then it became this thing that was passed around. Uh, never intentionally wanting to do that. And then because it was just a short little clip and it was x-ray vision, so it wasn't really like graphic and, and uh, 1080, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Right, 4K. Or shot in 4K. Yeah. Um, you know, people wanted to see more and they wanted to see more. Before you knew it, there were all these websites in Australia and Malaysia and offshore that were touting that they had the full video in their members area. And if you joined for $200, mm-hmm. you could get full access to this thing. Well, guess what? These were guys banging credit cards back then. Mm-hmm. They didn't have the content and tried charging back to one of these places back in the day. Yeah. People didn't even realize that when you gave your credit card, they had no idea what they were going to be in for. 90% of them forgot they even did it because they were high out of their minds or yeah. drunk when yeah. they said, I want to see Paris Hilton getting Yeah. Um, this is the Wild West days of the internet. Yeah, I mean, it was the days where everybody made a lot of money, unfortunately. You know, uh, people would sign up for a membership, twenty nine ninety five a month. Forget they even had the membership. And because we're lazy, cheap Americans that pay the minimum on our credit cards, never bother to see this charge from American telecom might have been <laughs> a site. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, eventually what happened was Paris and Rick started seeing where everybody were making millions of dollars off the rights of publicity of both of their names. Right. And they said, why don't we just put out our own tape? Yeah. So, again, you know, this is part of one of the things I want to put in, in my screenplay. Right. <laughs> but it's kind of showing what really happened. Right. And I'm working on a short film right now called KB in Paris. Uh, Paris and Me, actually, it's called. And it's, uh, it's a short film because it's more of a tongue-in-cheek look at fame. Mm-hmm. You know, One person's infamous, that person being me, and another person's famous. Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q&As, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.